Oh, it is Monday morning. and There's nothing like getting ready just to hear a word from the Lord. It is Mission Monday, and how excited, how excited I am today. Now, listen, as always, I thank you for joining me today. And, and, and of course, I never take for granted just the time, you know, that you give me. And more importantly, as I always say, is that the time, you know, that you give God. And so I always begin with prayer. So, Father, I am your servant. Use me today. Hide me behind the cross that your, your people will see and hear you and not me. Let your word go forth today. Let something be said. Something will give an example of how good you are and that we serve an awesome, mighty God. We thank you today. It's in the name of Jesus that I pray. Amen. Amen. Listen, just wanted to share a little bit with you. Now, during our worship service yesterday, I, I shared uh, during service uh, that after service was ended, that I was headed to uh, one of my favorite places to get some the fried chicken. Well, after service ended, uh, a number of friends invited me to accompany them to brunch. Uh, to a restaurant where the menu, as they say, the selection offers more than just fried chicken, Archie. Uh, and, that, uh, and if I still wanted fried chicken, there were many options that would be better for me. I, of course, had to confess that uh, uh, my doctor would probably appreciate that better. But, uh, you know, and, and when they made that offer, I have to confess that, you know, being open to try a new venue for good food uh, was not the issue. I'm always ready to try a new restaurant recommended by friends because typically they've been there before and they know what it's like. The where was not the issue. The challenge was an internal one for me, an emotional one, because this was my first time out in a group setting, other than work, of course, you know, the first time without my wife. Yet I knew that with this group that, that I would be okay that even if I needed a moment to gather my emotions during that meal, that, that this group would understand. So I had to decide, would it be one day in the future or day one today? Well, the decision was mine. Well, I'm here to tell you that my stomach and I both are happy to tell you that yesterday was day one. And my doctor also would be happy because instead of chicken, fried chicken, instead of that, uh, I had fish. And needless to say, somebody next to me had fried chicken and it would look very, very good. So with that, I have to say, hmm, a rain jack. You know, but in, in, in being out with friends was great and emotionally rewarding. You know, sometimes I, life brings us opportunities that sometimes require us to look inside of ourselves, to examine ourselves, to assess, to decide, to answer the question. Will it be one day or day one? We have to decide. You know, two things that are key in uh, believing that that your fulfillment and your day-to-day -day enjoyment really matters. Um, and the main difference between the two is that one day, meaning that you are delaying your goals, your dreams, and, and believing that your fulfillment is important, and yes, your day-to-day -day en enjoyment matters. But most important is believing that all these things are possible. You know, we are reminding God reminds us that that faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Faith can move us uh, from from one day to a day one decision. You know, even when we talk to doctors in the, from a medical perspective, the majority of studies that have been conducted tell us that faith and religious belief can be uh, correlated with well-being, with happiness, uh, you know, life satisfaction. Faith leads us to hope and optimism. Faith opens the door to purpose and meaning in life. Faith drives higher self-esteem. Faith can help with better adaptation to life's circumstances, bereavement, loneliness, as well as depression. Faith can cause God to open doors, oh, that you never dreamed possible to open. One day is an unrealistic goal. Why? Because one day isn't tangible, nor can it be measured. 
It is said that a goal without a plan is nothing more than a dream. Now, don't get me wrong. My life is filled, has been filled with dreams for a long time. But I had to take action before they could become reality. I had to decide that my one, my day one had to happen and that I had to be committed to doing the work. And trust me, day one doesn't have to be big. All that it takes are small, gradual steps towards your goal. One day or day one, the choice has been made. And after thinking carefully about the possibilities, the options, weighing it out, uh, no longer delaying. Day one, the first day of the rest of your life. It begins when you make the decision to take the first step into your future self. At church, my pastor would, would say, uh, when you're tired of being tired, change can happen. The shift from one day to day one can happen. I know that out of faith comes hope and belief that your dreams can come to reality. One writer puts it this way in the state. He says, it's amazing how a single day can change everything. One day you could have been stuck in a dead end job. And the next thing you know, you're driving to your first day in your new career, to your new position at the YMCA. <laughs> I had to get that in there, but it is. I love the Y. love being at the Y, your new position at the Y. I like the way that sounds. That one day that... Uh, you could have been a student, you know, quiet, introverted, never imagined that you could write an essay, let alone be a speaker in front of people. And the next thing you know that uh, you've published two books and, and that you're, you're, you're giving speeches on TED Talks or Harvard or Yale or MIT that, that you've come so far. But you see, one day is hope without work. The Bible tells us that faith without works is dead, that your day one may be a tough day. It may be a challenging week. But what I'm saying is that we must be prepared to be a participant, ready to do the work needed to make our dream come to reality. That when we believe in something that we don't and, and we don't start taking action on it, it only pushes reality further and further away and trust me day one doesn't again have to be the big things you can just take the gradual steps the small minute things the decisions that are there leaning in on your friends and, and trusting them but more than anything leaning in on god the word tells us to lean not to our own understanding but to trust in god and to lean on him where he will direct our paths that's what I'm talking about. You see, it's, it's like getting started with God, a relationship with God. It didn't for me, and, and it doesn't require that you take big steps on day one. God simply says that he wants you to seek him first and that all the things, all the dreams, all the hopes, all the things that you wanted to have, that those will come. Matthew puts it this way in, in Matthew 6. It says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God, oh, and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Listen, there are so many things that goes into the decisions we all have to make, and we all have to look inside of us. So many challenges that we face sometimes in life, and sometimes those challenges will have us push back and and examine, re-examine, over-examine. Sometimes when the door opens, we're so caught up between re-examining things, we keep looking at the door that was closed behind us. We keep looking back. We keep doubting ourselves sometimes. We keep wondering, is this the right move for us? Is this the right place where I should be? Is this the right decision for me at this point in time in my life? Oftentimes we find ourselves just looking in the mirror and said, is this the move for me? But I'm here to tell you that despite all the challenges that you may face, 
despite all the self doubts that you may have, faith will see you through. Faith will be the one piece that you can stand up on. Faith will be the one thing that God will count on. Even, even when I think about the woman with the issue of blood who came up and just touched the hem of his garment and he touched me, he said. And she had to confess it was me. And he says, lady, woman, this day your faith has made you whole. It is about faith and the will of God and lining ourselves up inside that will. That so many things, so many opportunities, so many doors can and will open for us. So, before we pray, I put this to you. Will it be one day? Or will it be day one? The decision is yours. Let us pray. Father, life is filled with challenges, options. To go or not to go. To move or not to move. So we seek your presence in our lives. We ask you to lead and guide us and protect us. We ask you, Lord God, that as we move down this road, this journey in life, that you walk with us, that you talk with us, that you remind us, Lord God, that we are yours. And because of that, that you will never leave nor forsake us. We thank you for that, Lord God, just in that knowledge in itself. We thank you for just knowing that you will be there. And Father, we know too that as you said with Moses as well as with Joshua, that I am here for you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. So go, be strong and be courageous for I walk with you. We thank you today, Lord God, continue, Lord God, just again to be with our leaders. Be with the ones who make the tough decisions each and every day, Lord God, whether or not they are in this country or whether or not they are worldwide, Lord God. Be with them in their decisions. And of course, bringing it back home to all of our medical team, our nurses, doctors, techs, Lord God, we thank you for them. We thank you for the caregivers, Lord God, who stand firmly beside oftentimes relatives in those weaning moments. And we thank you for them, for the decisions that they make to love the loved ones that they have, and in many cases to love the ones that are not relatives, but you have placed them there to be with them, Lord God. We thank you for our first responders, for our firefighters, for our police. We thank you, Father, for the ones who arrive in the ambulance when hopes to save lives and make things better. They're out there every day, Lord God, doing the things you call them to do, Father. And Lord, of course, our military, this country would not be the same without the military that we have. So we ask you, Lord God, to be with them, whether or not they're at home, whether or not they're near, whether or not they're far away, Lord God, whether or not they're the ones who disappear in the middle of the night to go and save lives and rescue people. We ask you to be with them, Father. And the Father, of course, we'd be remiss if we didn't pray for those in need. Those in this country, Lord God, yes, and we still have many in this country that are in need. Those that are in need around the world, we ask God to be with them. Move in a special way, Lord God. Cover them, house them, feed them, Lord God. Touch the hearts of many who have so that they can share that which they have. So they can do more than just pray, but they can take action. Donate, Lord God. Donate to the charities that will be used to support those that are in need. We thank you today, Lord God, and we bless you and we honor you as always, Father. Because in the name of Jesus that we pray, amen, amen. And as always, as we start this incredible week, again, we ask you to move forward, to go out there, have an incredible week, walk with God. And you know what? You don't walk alone. Uh, if you need prayer, if you need the opportunity to come and spend time with me, let me know. I'm always available for you. Or if you just want to just post a prayer to our prayer wall, all that information is going to come up for you shortly. But again, Thank you again for joining me today. And again, go forth. Have a blessed week. Amen.